Remember your servants, Lord, when you come in your kingly power. Amen. This past summer, my extended family and I rented a cabin at a state park in Pennsylvania. We spend our days hiking and playing cards, board games, and beanbags, going fishing, rowing boats, building campfires, basically doing all the things my brother and sister and I had spent many summers doing as kids. We had returned to this place many times in our adult lives, bringing our spouses and our children as the years passed, sharing time and memories with them. But this past summer was different. It was the first time my family had all gathered there together in this place since my dad had died two and a half years earlier. Now, Dad loved Black Mishannon State Park. He knew where the sweetest blueberries could be found. He knew the places on the lake where the catfish were likely to bite. And he knew just the right time of day to look down into the meadows to see the deer passing by. To be honest, I wasn't sure what this trip was going to be like. Although my grief at my dad's death was tempered by the passage of time, it was still tender enough that I wasn't sure what it would be like to be in this place without him. As the days passed, however, I found that dad was there. He was there in my niece's husband, Ross, as he helped my sons tie their fishing lures and cast their lines with the same patience and sense of humor my dad had shown summer by summer. He was there in the Olympic Games that my sister organized for us as we laughed so hard that we cried as we shot Nerf guns at targets and ran relays with light sticks. He was definitely there as we gathered at the table day by day eating, whether roasted hot dogs or my mom's famous Nana McMuffins. But most of all, he was there in the stories and the memories that we brought forth. Remember the time when Dad's hands were so cold when we were all out fishing and he cast his line and the whole fishing bowl went in the lake? Remember when he wrote that poem, Camping at 65? Remember how he used to feed the raccoons the marshmallows when they came by the campfire? Remember? Remember? I'm sure each of you could fill in stories of your own loved ones who you remember tonight. Remembering is a powerful experience, one that does more than just remind us of something. It's not simply a not forgetting, as we might use the word when we say, honey, remember to pick up milk on your way home from work. No, remembering for Christians is much more than that. Tonight, we gather as a community to remember. We remember our loved ones, what they meant to us, what they've given us. And in remembering them, we don't simply look back, but instead we call them forth. We name them, we pray for them, and we make them again present with us here in this place. Connect ourselves to them once again to remind ourselves that those who have gone before us are still present, not physically here with us, but as part of the mystery of the life eternal which God promises us and which we have faith we will one day join in. To remember the dead is, I think, as natural to humans as breathing. It's what we do when someone passes from this life. We gather, we tell stories, we remember. And tonight, we're blessed as Christians with the gift of being able to take that remembering one step further. Tonight, as we remember our dead, we take the time to create a place to remember, set aside a time to remember. And we surround the remembering with prayers, with hymns, with scriptures, all of which help to give shape and words to those things that we perhaps don't have words to express, 
but which we know to be true. In a few minutes, we'll gather around this table and be reminded again of the whole communion of saints who are present with us, those who have gone before us and those who will come after us, and we can take a moment to remember. As we remember tonight, and I encourage you to remember the stories that bring you closest to your loved ones, the good memories, the bad ones, the ones that make you laugh, and the ones that make you weep. All of them make those who we remember more real and more present. And as we do that remembering, remember the promise God's made to us, that our loved ones are in the hand of God. God holds all souls in life. The good they did here on earth, the hurts we caused them, the hurts they caused us, the good times, the bad times, we give them all into the hands of our Lord and Savior where they rest, where they are healed, where they are cleansed, where they are blessed. Tonight, we remember that death has been swallowed up in victory, and we remember that promise for our loved ones. And as we do, we're reminded that the promise is for us as well. We too, at the last, may enter with our loved ones into God's unending joy. As you hear the names of your loved ones read out loud, as you say amen to the prayers prayed on their behalf, as you listen to the hauntingly beautiful Sanctus and Agnes Dei, as you gather around the table here with strangers and loved ones alike, remember, remember, remember.